You remember when you were in high school? It's been 23 years ago for me. Right here, we have a high school student that's standing up for God, standing up for controversy, and we're going to see and hear what it's all about on this week of Becoming Branches. Come on in. Hey everybody, welcome back to Becoming Branches. My name is Adam Cook. With me, Pastor Dustin McKinney. I'm going to let you introduce this young lady because she's one of your youth group kids and I heard she rocks. She is so awesome. I mean, all of our youth group, all of our youth group kids are awesome. Mm -hmm. We really do have an amazing group of kids who love the Lord. They're seeking after Jesus. Mm -hmm. uh, and it, I would say every Sunday... We get, I mean, it's a good conversation. They're, they're, they're good kids, wouldn't you say? Yes. <laughs> and and Nevaeh is one of our seniors in youth yep. group. Uh, and uh, we asked Nevaeh to come on the show because, one, we're kind of interested what high school is like these days because it's been a hot minute since we've been in high Yeah, school. so I was talking to Nevaeh off camera. We're trying to calm her down, trying to get her <sighs> breathing right. You know, she's a little nervous. But she said uh, she's a 2025 grad, correct? Yes. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I'm pretty close. I'm an 02 grad. That's like a quarter of a century. <laughs> that's a quarter of a century almost. But yeah. That's huge. Yeah, and so yeah. I've never felt so old. And I'm 41 Sunday, and it's it's just alarming how old I feel next yeah. year. Well, you are old. So, okay. So, Thanks for just calming that right over. So, Nevea is a senior, like I said, in our youth group. And uh, Nevea, I, I just appreciate you so much. You have been a great leader in our youth group. Uh, and I know you are taking some difficult stan stances in school, you know, because Jesus tells us, right, that persecution is going to come. Um, but for those who follow the Lord Jesus and obey, uh, God has treasures in heaven uh, in store. And so I am just so proud of you. I'm so proud and blessed to know you, uh, along with all of our youth group kids. So uh, first, Nevea, just kind of getting to know you a little bit. What do you love to do for fun? Um, I really love music and spending time with friends and my grandma. <laughs> yeah, and your grandma is also yes. awesome and an awesome cook. Chili, she won the chili competition mm -hmm. uh, not too long ago and she's made like some pumpkin cookies. She's made us a whole bunch of delicious Wait a minute, things. why aren't we having Nevaeh's yeah. grandma as a guest? <laughs> and uh, it's gonna be Martha Stewart week with her grandma and I want all of the goodies. Uh, so you said the chili cook-off, which is coming up very soon, yeah. guys. October 20th here at Calvary Chapel. Is she entering? I think is so, she, yes. Is she the she only chili? Up. Remember you no, said? no, 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 no. Okay. But that would be okay if she was. Yeah, you said there's only one sign up. <laughs> now there's more. somebody's running a monopoly. Yeah, remember? that's right. Yeah, that's right. After after I threatened uh, starvation, yeah. uh, people started signing up, so that was good. Okay. You threatened people so they made more food. Yeah, exactly. So, that's okay. I'm excited. I'm excited. Yeah. So, so you said you like music, hanging yes. out with friends, and if I remember right, uh, so one of your friends, Addie, mm -hmm. who also is in our youth group, she was the one who first invited you to Calvary Chapel, yes. right? How did that all come about? Um, well, me, okay, so one of my friends knew her from ballet, and she accidentally texted me and her at the same time. So we started talking before she came to public school, and okay. then I met her in choir class, and we kind of got to know each other more, and she invited me. Oh, that's awesome. Were you in kind of any church pre-Calvary? We went to Northview, but it wasn't right for us. <laughs> okay. Yeah, well, that's fair. Understandable. Understandable. So... As you're thinking about high school, because again, you have to refresh our memories because it's, it's been a while. Um, tell us, what are some of the things that you really love about high school right now? And what are maybe some things that you aren't quite a big a fan of? <laughs> I know, you have to oh. think for a minute. I'll let you think on that because when I look back at high school, I know forever ago, I was a terrible student. Because my life at the time was was just, you know, my sister died in a car wreck. And if you go back, we talked about the family episodes, victim mentality episode. I walked away from God in high school. I deliberately chose, if God is this way, I'm going this way. And you're not in that spot. So I'm very curious what a young woman who stands up for the faith, contends for the faith in school is all about. Because... Unfortunately, I didn't contend for the faith. I didn't want anything to do with the faith, and I walked away from the faith. So that's where I was in high school. So I'm very eager to hear someone who has their stuff together. Well, see, I was I was quite the opposite of you. I was. You more, still are. <laughs> you're much better than I am. <laughs> uh, but I was I was like more like the academic type. Yeah. Like I wanted to take like the. AP classes. And, yeah, that you too. Uh, yeah. I, I, I could tell. You guys have this <laughs> light bulb about you. Yeah. 
Well, and I, you know, I worked hard. Like I wanted all A's, A pluses. Yeah. And now was that was that a parental thing? That well, my parents. I mean, yes. I mean, not any like over pressure, but yeah. like they wanted me to do my best. Yeah. And, you know, my dad always set the expectation that you know college was going to be something that we would that we were going to go to. Mm-hmm. Um, you and him kind of roommates. you know back before <laughs> <laughs> yeah back before college cost you know a million dollars, but uh, and I. High school is where I really started to kind of gain that passion for the Lord, mm-hmm. and so I wanted to do like FCA, but I I did a I did it the wrong way. Like I was kind of a jerk to people. Like, hey, you come to FCA? No, why? <laughs> and I like badger them immediately, cut them off the knees. <laughs> yeah. So when I talk, I like beating pipe people over the head with the Bible. Like that was me in high school. Uh, I didn't let the whole. I didn't let the Holy Spirit do the work the Holy Spirit's supposed to do. Gotcha. I tried to do the work of the Holy Spirit, and I quickly found out that that is not a successful uh, recipe. But the question was for you. Yes, yeah, Not us. <laughs> you guys are thinking, let the poor girl talk. Enough about you two old guys. Jeez. Go ahead. True. I think high school is a place where you find yourself. Like, mm-hmm. I've become more strong in the faith, mm-hmm. personally. Like, the past, like, junior and senior year. Mm-hmm. And I think it's where everyone, mostly everyone, finds themselves. Like mm-hmm. they become more outspoken. There's like theater where a lot of people join, and you just find your voice. Mm-hmm. Well, and I like what you said, kind of about finding yourself. And I think specifically about our faith. It's like when we, when we move into that, you know, thirteen year old, you know, as we're heading into fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, those years. Especially, I think, in the development of our faith and making it our own, those are really critical years, mm-hmm. right? Because <clears throat> for you, you still can't drive, and so usually those who are going to church is because you're going with your mom and dad, right? And what you know about the Bible is typically through your mom and dad or through a Sunday school teacher. Uh, but when you get to that older age, 14, 15, 16, you're really not in the Sunday school class anymore. Um, you have the ability to go to things outside of just what your mom and dad takes you to. And so, uh, Nevaeh, it has been an honor to see you grow. Um, you know, you've mentioned that, you know, just because I haven't been a youth pastor for all that long, but I've been around. And, I've, you know, Pastor Brian uh, allowed me to come on several youth group things. And uh, your growth, um, the fruit that you're showing in your life, uh, I give all the praise to the Holy Spirit, but I appreciate you allowing the Holy Spirit to take you deeper into that relationship with Jesus and seeing that fruit in your life, which is kind of where we want to focus on. So some of the fruit that we have seen in your life uh, are some of the, the difficult stances that you've taken um, in high school. So for those of you who don't know, uh, Nevea was a part of a student group uh, that founded a pro-life group uh, at the high school. Uh, if you can imagine in this day and age, that would have been a I would have struggled with that, and like I said, I was like on fire for the Lord. Um, but that's a that's a that's a tough spot. So first, tell us why do you feel God was leading you to to form this group. It kind of like happened all of a sudden. My mm-hmm. two of my friends, they're Catholic, and they went to this I don't know Catholic like seminar yeah, conference kind of thing. And there was a stand there about people making pro-life groups for schools, so it was just a stand about people who helped do that. (laughs) And they came to me, and they were like, do you want to help us start this? And I was like, yeah, I want to help you start it. And when I started it, I didn't know a lot about Mm pro-life. And continuing these past couple months, I've worked harder in the group, and yeah. And you recently just presented, right? Yeah. Uh, To students. So tell us a little bit about... What were some of the the research or the data uh, that you presented uh, about pro-life? I did the science behind pro-life, and I went to this website, and it told me about how um, the fetus or the baby Mm -hmm. meets all of the requirements for human life. It's Mm -hmm. growing. It develops. It creates its own nutrients. Mm -hmm. It's its own thing. Mm -hmm. Well, that's awesome. Well, I just so... You know, when you when you uh, were doing that presentation, we were praying for you. You know, it kind of led me into doing some of my own research, and I was watching a video about just the abortion process. Mm-hmm. Um, and it is enough. Like I was holding back tears mm-hmm. because, especially it, late term abortion. Yeah, I mean, and, and 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 I forget how many weeks it was, but I mean, it is not long at all. Where the baby has limbs, baby has a heartbeat, mm-hmm. um, and you know, and just to put it bluntly, like where they literally are like 
pulling the baby apart, mm -hmm. right? Um, I mean, really do your research. And it's interesting because the video I was watching is kind of a bait and switch. They were um, interviewing some people that were pro-choice. Mm -hmm. And then they had them watch this video. This is so. This is what you're supporting, and they were so horrified, mm -hmm. like on the spot. They're like, never again, mm -hmm. um, because I think a lot of people they really don't understand, right? Uh, what is it's part of a movement or an agenda right. that they want to align themselves with, but they know very little information yeah. what they're supporting, mm -hmm. right? And yeah. that you're absolutely right. Yeah. So Nevea, you know, so you've taken a stance that you are pro-life. Mm -hmm. uh, you have gone as far as to present research to the school to your to your peers. Now I would imagine. Uh, that maybe at some point that's come with a little bit of pushback. Yes. Um, so tell us a little bit about, describe some of the pushback you've had and how do you feel like uh, you've handled it? How has God helped you through it? One, when we first started the group, two days after, maybe if, if even that, I had a girl behind me. She didn't know that I helped start the mm. club. But she was like, I can't believe the school is doing this. And I was like, and I, I didn't turn around. I <laughs> smiled to myself. And I was like, I felt bad. <laughs> and then a couple, like a week ago, a bunch of parents were talking about, it was originally a problem with the principal, but they mentioned Warriors Embracing Life. And it turned into a problem with us. And it was just mm -hmm. a whole bunch of parents fighting. There was over 200 comments on it. Mm -hmm. And... I looked at them and I was laughing because we did everything legally and everyone was fighting us. Like, yeah. we're high schoolers yeah. and you guys are adults and right. you're fighting us. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, I felt bad because they don't understand. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, and I appreciate your heart of, of empathy and sympathy. And, you know, I'm, you had reached out for prayer and the, you know, and as I told you, right, darkness hates the light. Mm -hmm. Right, and so right now in school, you are standing for light, mm -hmm. you are standing for the will of the Father, and darkness is going to attack that any chance that it gets. Right, and so when you see these comments that are coming out of the woodwork, because I, cause I was curious and I went and read some of these things, mm -hmm. and I was like, You need to get a day job, <laughs> you have way too much to be thinking about. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, but a lot of people asked a lot of good que questions, like, so if the school had a pro-choice group, would you be this passionate about getting rid of it? Mm -hmm. Like, it, and there were, there's some really good points, but, so through this Nevea, um, what, how do you feel God is leading you, or what, maybe what's something God has taught you through some of the, the pushback that you've been going through? How to be confident in the faith. Hmm. That's the yeah. big one. <laughs> so expound about that. So someone, so let's say, you know, right now, let's say earlier, maybe you weren't as confident in the faith, and now maybe you're a little bit more confident. What's the difference between those two? I, I mean, I still don't know everything about the Bible. No, I don't know yes. everything. Nobody Do you know does. everything about the Bible? <laughs> but yeah. I, oh, okay. No, no, absolutely not. That backfired. <laughs> I, don't, I know, like, four books. <laughs> and I don't know. But where I stand now... I don't think I could have argued mm. the same thing back then. Mm. Like, mm -hmm. I can't think of an idea. You know how <laughs> I know you've grown? Because we asked you before to be on the podcast. Mm. Yeah, and you true. said, there's no way I can do it. And here she is tonight. So that you're, you are literally looking at yeah. what the Holy Spirit's grown you in. You're yeah. sitting here right now. And this is just the start of growth. Uh, kind of going back to all those comments. And exactly what he said. Satan isn't going to attack you when you're not doing anything right. that he doesn't want. You know what I'm saying? Like he's going to come at you hardcore and, and discourage you and stuff. That's how you know you got to keep digging because yeah. you're hitting a vein and mm -hmm. you're hitting a vein for Christ. So that's right. awesome. Yeah, keep well, at it. so what, and one of the things I, uh, I love about you, Nevaeh, right? So God ultimately cares about the condition of our heart, mm -hmm. right? He wants a heart that is teachable. He wants a heart that is obedient and will submit to his authority. Um, and... You know, I remember uh, when you were kind of, we were, I think it was maybe getting close to last Christmas or something, and I had asked your uh, grandma, I was like, hey, what is, is Nevaeh asked for anything for Christmas? And she was like, yeah, she really, the main thing that she wants is a study Bible. Like, that's like the number one thing on her list. And I was like, praise God. <laughs> I was like, that's awesome that, you know, you're hungry for the Word and, 
And you're talking about, you know, you're more confident in the faith. And I think that has come from you hiding God's word in your heart and knowing this is what God says. I can walk in it. I know that this is right because my father has told me that this is the direction I am to go. And so I, I, I'm proud of you for, uh, for that. So what advice, so obviously, you know, there are more Christians uh, in high school right now. Um, do you have any advice for Christians in high school who I would call undercover Christians? Like, you know, they don't really live out their faith while in school. They reserve it for just Sunday mornings. Uh, what, what piece of advice would you have for those young men and women? I love That's that. the same thing I would have I said to him. On the spot. Pick a team. <laughs> pick a team. Either you That's are with Jesus question. or you're not. It is a hard I question. I used to live like that, though, to be fair. I used to kind of, when I was snapping out of the drug-induced anger fury that I was, um, and I started to come back to the Lord, the first step of that was, okay, I'll do this around youth group kids. Mm. I'll read the Bible around church. I'll stand up with you when we do praises. Mm -hmm. But then when I'm out with my friends, that's me, you know, then I yeah. flip that switch. So that's kind of what he's talking about. And you probably are surrounded by kids like that who in, in, in the quiet area are going to give you more support. Oh yeah, I, I love Jesus too. And they kind of whisper it. Mm -hmm. Um, and you got to be one of those people that's like, no, we're going to shout Jesus and we're, this is who we are. And that takes guts. I mean, you already you already know what it takes to stand up and be controversial, right? This whole topic, and that's one of the biggest topics. Uh, look at the the debate right now in our political stance. That is, if not the biggest, uh, the border, uh, the economy, and abortion are the big three. And so you you already did that. And the next the next step is to uh, to be loud for God, and that's awesome. I would say take baby steps. Because what about Bob? It's oh, a great movie. So I know that's what you're referencing. Baby steps? It means setting small, reasonable goals for yourself, one day at a time. Yeah, it is. Yeah. What about that's what she was yeah. referencing? For baby steps. <laughs> baby steps to the car. Baby steps to the car. <laughs> hey, baby steps. I'm not going to interrupt you again, I promise. Oh, okay. Baby steps. Yeah, baby this steps. This book changed my life. <laughs> Sorry. Was that a song? That was in the movie. I know, but it sounded like a song. <laughs> So baby steps. We're on track. Baby steps. We're not going to interrupt her again. <laughs> it, it takes baby steps to talk about Christ. And, and go ahead. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I feel like a lot of people don't feel as confident in their faith like I used to. Mm -hmm. And they don't want to talk about it because they don't want to be incorrect. Mm -hmm. And I remember baby Kayla steps, talking about like, that. 100%. Yeah. Get more confident in your faith. And mm -hmm. then slowly come out to people and talk to people about it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, praise God. I like, you know, Pastor Roger, I hear him say, you know, do the next right thing, right? We don't, you know, I don't have to go out uh, in school and I have to, you know, go to the tallest spot and yell, Jesus loves you! <laughs> like, right, in, in this conversation that I'm having with friends, maybe the next right thing is to not join in on the profanity, right? Mm -hmm. And then maybe the next right thing is when I'm with a friend, Start to ask those deeper questions, you know, moving from the temporary to the eternal. Mm -hmm. Like, what about this whole, like, after we die thing? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Have you ever thought about that? Like, what happens after we die? Mm -hmm. um, and it's amazing sometimes just asking those questions and where they can lead to in conversation. So, well, Neve, you are awesome. You know, we have, uh, like I said, really enjoyed watching you grow. And the best part of, about it is I know you're not done yet, right? I know the Lord... Um, is going to continue to uh, yield fruit in your life as long as you continue to submit to Him. Um, what are your plans after high school? Um, I want to go to a Christian college, and mm -hmm. one of the ones I got into it, it's Grace College. Well, yeah. Congratulations, yeah, Grace, Grace College. <laughs> so you're, you're, already, you're already accepted? Yes. Man, when you, so next fall? Next fall, Grace yes. College. Yeah. Take the four books you know, and you're gonna <laughs> you're gonna go to your professor and say, "Look, we got to study these four. This is what I know. Yeah. What are what are the four? Uh, the Gospels. There you go. Nothing wrong with that. Hey. In fact, if you're gonna point anyone who's never ever heard of the Bible, yeah, good place to start. Well, she knows Esther now. Yes, that's and true. And First Timothy because yes. we we did those in. Uh, and I heard this guy on Sunday morning is really hollering about Jude. I don't know if you've been in there or not, but he. That guy's a knucklehead. He's really. <laughs> Oh, knucklehead. That guy needs to stop 
No, uh, Pastor Dustin's been doing an excellent job on the Book of Jude. Um, I got to know something. I never, we never found out. Did you get your Christmas present? Did you get your study Bible? Yes, I did. Because if not, I was going to order one for her tonight. Um, so you got your study Bible, and you use it. You love it. Yes. Do you write in it and highlight yes, stuff? It's all highlighted and colored and everything. Do your colors represent different things? Or you just wanted to I grab just, a different color. I just highlight. Okay, because I, I want to show it. you guys something. <laughs> Look at this cup. <laughs> It has all sorts of things on it, so I can imagine how colorful the Bible is. Mm -hmm. For sure. Very colorful. <laughs> all right. Well, Nevaeh, thank you so much for being on the show. Like I said, we appreciate you. Hold on. Well, we said Grace College. Do you know what you want to study yet? I know something about the Bible or something. I want to work with kids, but I'm no. not exactly sure. No. <laughs> yeah, I can see that. I think Ooh, what if she's going to be in a youth group or something? No, that would be all like right. Like some kind of a youth group oh, or yeah. what kind of minister. Maybe she'll go into some kind of worship or maybe she'll go into... <laughs> yeah. I'll be here. Just keep going. I want to think about all the things that God might want you to do. <laughs> well, well, I have had the privilege of seeing Nevaeh work with some kids because we have helped like some local shelters and things. Um, and she is really great with kids, so that makes a lot of sense to me. So that's awesome. Well, Nevaeh, we'll be praying for you. We're praying for all of our awesome kids in the youth group. Shout out to all of our CIA students. Uh, you want to take us out, Mr. Adam? Sure. Because I stink at taking us out. <laughs> no, you that's, don't. That's, no, that's, that's no, your, you did. Thank you so wheelhouse. much. Thank you so much for being on our show. Thank you for stepping uh, out of your comfort zone. I know you didn't really want to talk in front of a camera and audience. <laughs> But you're already doing it at high school. You're already growing in the Lord. Mm -hmm. uh, I just encourage you for this next senior year in high school and in youth group, step up and be that leader. Amen. Step up and take charge. Step up and be the light. And uh, I'm excited for it. I can't wait to hear what Grace is all about. And uh, thank you so much for being on this week of Becoming Branches. See you next time.